Hey, let's first talk about uh, this idea of a, uh, a global minimum tax. I think when we first talked about it a couple months ago now, I, I don't think we, and I will, I'll be the first to, to say that I didn't think it was going to happen and I wasn't sure what the implication was going to be. I think you said something similar. Yeah, good morning, Andrew. Good to see you. So, um, so I think this uh, minimum tax has uh, less importance now that this 28% uh, corporate tax rate, which would have been a, a major economic surrender, is now off the table. Still, the international tax changes that are being proposed in the House this week, no doubt, will make us less competitive. Uh, certainly, I think will drive investment, intellectual property, um, manufacturing overseas, I think, in a significant way. I don't think global minimum tax around the world is going to change that or make us more competitive. The other fear, uh, and to the point that was made earlier here, there's no question. Secretary Yellen has to bring this agreement back uh, to Congress. Uh, the worry, I think, for most members of Congress, both parties, uh, which is, one, these changes will make it better to be a foreign uh, company than a U.S. one. And at the end, it will take a big bite out of America's tax base, which there's no question the second part of this agreement requires American companies to send their tax revenues uh, around the globe and away from the U.S. So, so you would object to it? You're planning to object to it? Just to be Well, I haven't seen the agreement yet. I think the details matter. The timing really matters. I think both parties are very concerned about making the international changes now. It's almost like we'll take the step to become less competitive years down the road, hopefully you will. So I think there's um, a lot of bipartisan concern about the timing of it and the enforcement of all this. I wanted to ask you, we, we spent a lot of time debating and talking about taxes together, Congressman. So I wanted to ask yes, you sir. about some of the, the, the tax um, plans that have now been put on the table. The, the billionaire wealth tax effectively taken off the table, but back now on the table is these new brackets uh, at higher numbers, $10 million, $25 million. Do you support that? You know, I don't. Uh, the couple reasons. One, there's about $1.2 trillion of taxes on businesses in this agreement, $800 billion on businesses, uh, the rest on small businesses. And then you have these tax increases. The reason I don't is that income uh, comes because of value. You've, a you've added a valuable product or service. You've created jobs. Of you, you've made major investments in the economy. Why, why do you punish that? Why do you cap that here in the United States? And so, and the other thing, too, is the thought that the government at any income level has a greater claim over your earnings than you do, I think is economically offensive. So in, under this scenario, in some states, that'll be the case. But, Congressman, is there, is there any scenario in which you would be open to raising taxes of any sort on anybody? Well, um, I don't know what that hypothetical would be. What I do know is when you tax people for value, for investment, for creating jobs and opportunities, your economy slows. Uh, that, that's what will happen in some of this. And the other point of this, Andrew, is so how does the government add value? In this case, they're going to use those dollars to, to uh, offer about a half a trillion dollars in green pork. Uh, they'll be giving away much of that, by the way, to the wealthy and to the biggest corporations. And so, look, I see value more in the open market with those dollars than I do from the government. 